So today, the 11th Sunday after Trinity, it's also the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, if you're of that particular high church tradition. So I thought we'd include a little bit of Mary as well as sticking to the readings for the 11th after Trinity. We are being recorded. Everything is there. Notice sheet on the website, as you know. There is even song at St. Matthew's at six o'clock this evening. Same sermon as you're about to get now, but there will be some slightly different music. So, every now and again, when my dad got up and was in a good noisy mood and the rest of the family was sleeping, he would sing Awake My Soul and With the Sun extremely loudly. So in memory of my dad, let's have this as our first hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And since it's Mary's feast day, rather than sing the Gloria, let's sing Tell Out My Soul, a metrical version of the Magnificat. Let's pray the two collects. Firstly, the one for the Blessed Virgin Mary. Almighty and everlasting God, who stooped to raise fallen humanity through the childbearing of Blessed Mary, grant that we, who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness, may daily be renewed in your image and conform to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Jude is going to read the Old Testament lesson. From Proverbs, chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
so let's sing a Marian hymn for Mary, mother of our Lord, God's holy name be praised. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the living bread. We continue to work our way through John chapter 6. Jesus is teaching that John has placed after the feeding of the crowd with the loaves and the fish. 
It's tradition which is loaded with so much else, 2,000 years of understanding of the Eucharist. If you visit Poltross Burn Mile Castle on Hadrian's Wall, it's just on the border of Newcastle, uh, of Northumberland and Cumbria, in a corner of the fort, you can see this circle, the circle of a bread oven, and it's still black and burned. And you can imagine the Roman soldiers cooking their daily bread on this very stove. It's actually the best mile castle on Hadrian's Wall because it's right next to the Newcastle Carlisle railway line. So you can sit and watch trains while you're doing the Romans. Several years ago, I was at an educational event on Hadrian's Wall and the speaker asked us to picture a Roman. What sort of person did we picture? A builder, a soldier, a trader, a shopkeeper. Think about their job, their clothes, their nationality, their family. Then the speaker said, tell me what she looks like. And of course, every single person in that room had pictured a Roman man. Well, imagine for a moment, the Roman women in the settlements around the forts, cooking for their families. Women not very different, surely, to Mary and her family. And through the ages, it is the women who have sought to feed their families. I commented last week that one thing that has changed in our lifetime is that bread is no longer the staple of our diet that it once was. It is an extra, almost an add-on, almost a treat, which is not how it was supposed to be. Well, of course, that's not the case for many people in our world and in our country. There are many people in our city who buy the cheapest bread from the co-op because that is all they can afford. And it's what they need to feed their children, even if they go hungry. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, and that's a challenge to all of us. The Jews can't get their heads round the person, the presence of Jesus in their midst, their need to believe, to follow, to turn their lives to him. And 2,000 years later, I don't think we're any better. There was a lady at the book sale yesterday, a lady I'd never seen before, who said to me, has the church reopened? I managed to do my, not to do my, well, we've never been closed. It's just our buildings that have been closed. And I smiled sweetly and said, oh, yes, we've been having worship in there every Sunday since Easter Sunday. Oh, well, perhaps I'll come sometime, she said. So I said, oh, do, do you get the magazine? Oh, yes, I get it every month. I stopped myself saying, well, if you get the magazine every month, why don't you read the flipping thing? Then you might know we'd reopened at Easter. Smile sweetly, happy smiley vicar, it would be lovely to see you, you know. But before I'm too hard on her, we're all perfectly capable of moaning, not taking it seriously, not doing the job properly, not actually turning to this living bread that all of us need. And when we share the sacrament, whether we kneel at the communion rail or the vicar comes to us and places the bread in our hand, or we meet in our own front rooms, we are literally doing what Christ commands us to do. We are taking his life into ourselves. And when we fail to make worship a priority, we do, to a certain extent, cut ourselves off from what we are offered. Of course, Christ's love gets to us in all sorts of different ways, but we should make worship a priority. And I'm aware that that is not always easy. Oh, I've lost one of my pictures. Well, I'll go back to one at the beginning. I should find it there. There we are. Today, the church celebrates one of the feasts of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pontyland was dedicated to St. Mary. But you try and celebrate a patronal festival in the middle of August. Everyone has got somewhere else they'd rather be. Oh, we're on holiday. No, the choir's off. You want to celebrate when? Well, in the paintings of the Annunciation, it's traditional that Mary is there, the holy young woman. She's often reading, praying, quietly communing with God. And I suspect that 
like any other young mum, once her baby actually arrived, finding space and time to read, to pray, to commune with God was not as easy. Now, we know, of course, that the hymn tells us that the little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. So he must have been an incredibly easy baby to look after. Believe that you'll believe anything. But then, of course, there were brothers and sisters, too. And I don't suppose Mary got a lot of time to herself. I do hope that Joseph was a helpful dad, but he was also a dad who had to work to earn money to provide an income. And I doubt life was always easy for the Holy Family. And it isn't easy for families today. I had a young mum on the phone the other day. She wants her baby christened. The parish in which she lives has a policy that parents must do a five week alpha course to learn about the basics of the Christian faith before baptism can be arranged. Well, I can understand this. We're asking parents to make big commitments, so they should give it some serious thought. But as the mum said to me, her partner works away a lot of the time. She's coping with a young family. A five week commitment isn't possible. And I want my baby to be christened. Well, her baby will be christened by me in one of our churches, and we will welcome them. It may be rare that we see them. It may feel like another flipping christening. But I do believe that our job is to offer them God's love and God's welcome and to offer it unconditionally. And if that makes me an old reactionary priest stuck in my ways, out of touch with the mission agenda of teaching and evangelism, well, yes, I am. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is portrayed as female, and I wouldn't dare argue with that. And wisdom tells us to turn in here, to live, to walk in the way of insight. And that's what we seek to do and to help others do as well. So may God help us and give us all the wisdom to do just that. Amen. Now, I've just realized that I've gone back to the beginning so you could see this picture. And if I start going forward again, all the music is going to start playing. And we're going to have four hymns playing at the same time. So hang on a minute while I just stop sharing my screen. And then, hello, everybody. I shall share my screen again. And I shall do that. No, I won't. I will go to the place where I want to start again. And then if I share the screen from there. Ah, but I forgot to share the music. <sighs> share sound. It's already there. Good. Right. So hopefully we're now back where we were. <laughs> you think after all this time we'd have worked out how to do this, wouldn't you? Uh, my wife is shaking her head. OK, then, everybody, let's say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come on. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's listen to Philip Moore's setting of What Wondrous Love Is This? 
I hope the sound works. Julie, can you give me a thumbs up as long as it does, please? Wisdom has built her house, she has hewn her seven pillars. She calls, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Lord, the way of insight seems so blurred. As we look at the situation in Afghanistan, where the desire to leave seems to have hidden the reality of what will happen. We cannot understand the wisdom of the Taliban, their beliefs and way of life. We cannot imagine what the future will be 
especially for the women and the girls. We pray for all those trying to make peace, trying to build a peaceful future. And we pray for those who are desperate to escape, afraid for their lives, wondering how they will survive. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. Wisdom seems hidden as our world responds to the changing climate. For decades, we've been told that humans need to change, that our economy and life has to be constructed in a different way, that we cannot expect to consume so many resources. Yet we have not listened. We have not listened because the changes will affect us. They may well mean we cannot live as easily or travel as much. We know the challenges of a sustainable world, but we do not want to heed them. Grant us wisdom. Grant our leaders wisdom. Bring the nations and the peoples of the world together. Lord, may we make the changes necessary so our world can survive in all its beauty and life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In Plymouth, we've seen how wisdom can be destroyed by false doctrine, beliefs that apparently are based on hatred, anger, evil, fear, beliefs that lead to destruction and death. We pray for individuals whose beliefs and actions are evil, and we know, Lord, how deeply that evil is rooted. Our society has turned away from its Christian heritage its Christian faith, and the vacuum is being filled by different beliefs, many of which we believe are not based on your love. We pray for all as we counter such hatred, as we proclaim your gospel. But we give thanks too that the light is not defeated. For the wisdom, the planning, the dedication, the goodness, we saw in our emergency services, in our hospitals, in local government, in a community that comes together. We pray especially for the churches of that city, for men and women of goodwill. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the life of our churches, for our two churches, our diocese, Bishops Libby and Malcolm, for our friends in Alastry churches together and our friends in the Nagpur churches. We give thanks for the support we were able to give them in yesterday's book sale and the joy of being social again. We pray for our families as we come together for a picnic this afternoon. For Blake and Natalie, as they are married this afternoon. For Max and Helen next Saturday. Lord, grant them your love and wisdom, we ask, in their continuing journey. We pray for friends who are unwell, for all for whom we are concerned. We remember our friend John Gear, giving thanks for his ministry and dedication to you, for his wisdom and faith. We pray for Christine and the family. Bless them, we ask. Bless us as we mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy.
May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless you. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sophie, for the technical side. Thank you, Julie, for reading. Zoom service next Sunday. Well, it's not Peter because Peter's got a christening to do at 12 o'clock next week and then a wedding at two o'clock next week. David Redfern's wedding, David and Karen from St Edmunds. So next week, Julie's going to lead and Clive is going to preach and they'll probably get it right rather than make a mess of it like I did today. <laughs> Perhaps not, says Julie. So let's have Nun Dankit Alagot, Karg Ellert, played by John Grattan. <laughs> 